Hello everyone and welcome to Power Playground. This is your host Michael and today I'm going to be make, basically making a tool to uh, uh, fix this ball head on this light. Now here's my dilemma here. This light is pretty heavy and I usually have it on top of like a very large C stand. I'll show a picture of my normal uh, still photography set I use this in primarily. So yeah the main issue with this here is that normal some as you can see, it's um, I tighten this ball all the way I can with my fingers. Like it's supposed to be like one of those finger tight things, this little knob here. But when I hold it, especially this way, it uh, it doesn't always it doesn't reliably hold it down. So if I were to move the light, it could shift down. As you can see, like it's not holding still. And I'm, I'm not really giving it an insane amount of pressure. Of course, it's working a little better than it was earlier, but still, it's just a little bit suspect. The thing is, I don't have batteries loaded on right now. I just got this battery attached before it. Typically, I'd hook into the DC jack, but uh, I just wanted to make it a little bit more cordless just because I don't like wires everywhere when I'm shooting. Now, this little knob comes out, so I'll go ahead and remove that. As you can see, it instantly became loose. So what I plan on doing here is I am going to model a tool that goes around this contour of this knob exactly so it's just like a little wrench essentially. Now the main thing I'm going to do first, I'm going to do an overhead shot the best I can in order to get an accurate dimension. So I'm going to be right back. I'm going to get a ruler of some type to get a reference point for the measurement. Okay, there's our ruler. I'll go ahead and place it and I have this nice over one of my lights going on the other lights. So I'm just going to place this here. That way we have a good solid accurate reference to our scale. And then I'm going to use my iPhone just to take a simple overhead picture here. Try to get it as overhead as possible. So I don't know how well you can see that, but there's a couple of crosshairs. And there's like a, a white one and a yellow one. And as you go, it actually kind of, I believe that's like a level, a level shot. So we'll try that real quick. We'll see how we do. I got it focused right on the thing. Yeah, that that right there is solid. So I'm going to go ahead and get this image put on my computer so I can go ahead and put this in Fusion 360. And that will be our reference. All right, folks, we are back in Fusion 360. Now, the first thing I want to go ahead and do is I want to go ahead and go to Insert up here and then go ahead and click on Canvas, which can also be reached through the menu if it's not up here already. We could click on that. Then we want to click on the face we want to do. Now, obviously, we want to go, uh, want to do it on the Z plane. So click this plane right here. And then I'm going to go ahead and select my image. I'm just going to go 2D plane view here. So I have the image placed in here. Now, as you could see, I didn't really have any sort of reference of how big this could be, but it's actually pretty easy to scale up this image. So what we'll go ahead and do is we'll go ahead and expand the canvases uh, drop down on the side menu here, the browser menu. And then we'll want to go to our image. We'll want to right click that and go to calibrate. And then easy as clicking on the first pixel corner of the ruler. And then we'll go ahead and just do 20 millimeter. And then, yep, just hit 20. And then boom, there we go. But now we should be able to go, say, create a sketch on this plane. And then this particular line, that's 20 millimeter right there. Boom, easy as that. So now the image is properly scaled. So as you can see, it's like a transparent, it's just basically a guide for us in order to uh, create the shape that we need to create here. Now, what we'll wanna do is we'll want to find a center point. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna create a circle and we're gonna try to get, okay, so that's pretty good. So that's gonna be our center point of reference here. That can be pretty close to what we'll need here at least. And then we'll want to create an outer circle. Let's see, there's our outer shape, and that's pretty dang close. Like, it's it's not 100% accurate, or not 100% close. It could be that these aren't really, like, spot on, and I could be slightly off on this, at least, this threaded profile. I had to do just a little bit of tinkering off camera. Since the uh, this isn't, like, a perfect top-down shot, it's just, like, a rough reference shot, I have to essentially do like a freehand sketch. That's going to be the closest I'm going to get to getting a decent contoured shape around this object here. So what I'm doing is I'm just hitting the L key and I'm just starting off. I'm holding down to get this uh, contour here. 
So what I'll, what that'll do is once you click from one edge, hold it down, it'll create a curved line. And then if you see, I have the little um, tangent. So it's just it's a little finicky. So you just have to kind of make the lines move and they'll tangent so they'll be smooth lines. But you have to make sure, essentially I'm making them a little looser than they should be. There we go. We're getting somewhere. So you just have to kind of fight with it. It'll try to snap to like each line, which is, I don't, I'm not a huge fan of this, the cons snap constraints. Sometimes they tend to get in the way more than usual, but it's, uh, it makes things a little easier in life sometimes. So yeah, you, you see, if you see, I just click and drag and essentially it's going to try to, all the lines are going to be modified a little bit each time you move them. So the once you move one line, it'll domino effect onto the other lines. You just essentially have to fiddle with this until you get a uh, pretty close shape. As you can see, I'm leaving a bit of a gap just because I don't want to have this uh, be super tight to where it won't be able to go on, especially this is, since this isn't 100% top down. I want this to be a little looser just because I want it to be able to fit over it and not have any clearance issues. If I make it a little bit loose, it's not gonna be a huge deal because the plastic will swell up anyway, so obviously you wanna compensate for that. And as you can see, the um, you can't go from like a line going down then all the way, it has to like smoothly transition. So I couldn't do like an under swooping line like this. It has to be, it has to go essentially in a cur er, in an arc formation if you're doing this tangent lining. So I had to, on each one of these knobs, I had to do two line, two tangent lines sets. And then on these edges here, I'll do another two. Delete you, line key. There we go, much better. All right, so I'll cut back to when I have all this done. I think y'all have the idea of this pretty much. All right, folks, so off camera, I went ahead and finished off this shape, just had to fight with it a fair bit. Now I did some calculations from the center point to this, to the uh, bottom edge of the actual light itself, which is uh, basically the minimum clearance I have for this. It's about 48 millimeter. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create an outer body. So 48 would be the maximum most shape I could do but I want to go a little smaller and I don't need to go that big. I'd say like 40 should be just fine. I'm just going to define that to 40. And then obviously I want some sort of handle, some sort of grip so I can actually uh, tighten this thing properly. Probably want to do it like an off center and then maybe curve up a little bit. So what I'll do is I'll take this um, bottom most deal right here. There we go. And then do this, we'll have it curved just up a little bit, and we'll have it tangent off. There you go, come on. Parallel that. I'm just doing like a rough in really, really quick here. There we go. And I'm just gonna make sure these are, I'm gonna set a parallel constraint on those to make sure here, and then set these curves to tangent. Okay, there we go. And we'll create some reinforcement here as well, just because I don't want this. It shouldn't, it should be fine, but honestly, just in case here. Could do something like that. That that would probably be okay. Is this, I'm just gonna make doubly sure this isn't too long for my print bed. It's about, I'm perfectly satisfied with near 120. That will print. I can print it sideways if I need to fit it on the bed. If I have any issues, I don't think I will. I wonder how thick this guy is. We could set that to 10. That's fine. And then to make this look a little smoother, we can click these two circular or these two curved edges and go to concentric. And there we go. It looks a lot more smoother now. Uh, let's see here. We'll see if I need that outer curve. I'm not going to do that just yet. So I'm going to select these two edges. I'm going to hit the Q key or modify, press pull. 
Now, the measured thickness of the, uh, the, the nubs on this knob here is about nine millimeters, probably closer to eight on the edges. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do a height of eight because that'll be fine. Plus, if I need to get it in any close spaces, that'll uh, make things a little easier on us. So there we go. Hey, that, that seems to fit in the profile pretty well. Um, ooh, okay, huh, there we go. Make it look all fancy or something. I don't know. <laughs> Just spitballing, really. Four. Yeah, there we go. Okay. There we go. Like that. Neat. So if we were to take the image away, there's our basic wrench tool. So I'm going to go ahead and print this off and we'll give it a test. Okay, so look at this folks. Here's the tool. It looks pretty nice. I'm, uh, I'm pretty impressed with it here. And if we uh, look at that, fits like a glove. So I can just finger, I can get this up in position. I can finger tighten it. That's all she can go. Still, still can move it easily. So then I use the tool, get it on there nice and snug. Still a little bit snug on the outside, but I think it's just because of the over moldings. And I can just cam it all the way down. There we go. Yeah, it just needs a little bit of refinement, but overall, it's pretty solid tool here. So that's pretty dang tight. The seat not uh, going anywhere. That is awesome. For those that are interested, I'm going to put the Thingiverse link as well as a product link um, so you can either print it or buy it in the description. That's gonna to be to my own 3D shape engineering shop for that link. I just wanna thank you all for watching. If you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button, consider subscribing and all that good jazz, and have a great day.